There are many obstacles that will try to prevent you on your way to becoming a pro game developer or a programmer, but these three that I'm going to talk about in this video are the top obstacles, why a lot of people find game development hard and programming hard in general, and why they even quit. So my number one on this list is college, and I'm not saying this to spark a controversy like should you go to college or should you not go to college and so on and so forth, that is a preference of your own, but what I find about college or fascinating about people who go to college, they put too much effort into college. They focus on just getting good grades and I need to get an A, I need to get 10 or whatever just so that they can satisfy some need they have, but mostly they want to satisfy their parents because, you know, when parents gather, they're like, Oh, what is your son uh, studying? Oh, well, he's studying computer science and he has all A's. And stuff like that. They need to brag to each other what their kids are doing, which puts pushes or puts the pressure on the kids and they focus on things that don't matter. Why I say the grades don't matter? Because especially if you are studying a field like programming, which is mostly practical, you need to focus on the practical side of things. This is what's important to, to you. You don't need to get an A or 10 on every exam that you go out. Be average in college, but when it comes to your practical side and learning what's actually important, programming skills, practical skills, game development skills, be above average when it comes to that. And don't listen to, you know, old people. I'm not saying this to offend old people, but that was a different time. Like when you hear your grandpa or, or whoever, like some older dude, they're like, well, back in my day, college was, you know, when you go to college or worse back then, when you finish college, you got a job, blah, blah, blah. These times have passed, especially when it comes to tech jobs. Now, I'm not saying, again, that you should not go to college or stuff like that. That is your preference. I'm just saying if you are going to college, put your priorities in order. So focus on what's important. Don't study eight hours for the next exam that you have. Study two hours just so that you can pass that exam. But invest the other six hours in something that's actually useful, something that you will benefit from. And of course, I'm not saying, again, this is when it comes to tech jobs, because you need to go to college to, or to finish college for some things that you want to work, such as being a doctor or a lawyer. You need a college diploma for that. But when it comes to programming, you don't need it. So don't focus too much. If you're going to college, finish it and stuff like that. I don't want to be the person like, Hey mom, the guy from the internet told me there's quit college, so I don't want to go to college tomorrow. No, go and finish, but focus on what is important. The second part or the second thing on my list is don't rely too much on tutorials. I see this a lot, especially on my channel, like for every single thing that somebody wants to do, they message me, can you do tutorial for this? Can you do tutorial for that? And just the other day I was browsing Facebook because you know, this is what good game, game developers do. They browse Facebook in their spare time. <laughs> but I came up or stumbled upon a post where a person, he was like advertising his YouTube channel. He's like, hey, I'm going to be different and stuff like that. I'm going to do some advanced things when it comes to game development because everything online that you find is basic and blah, 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 blah. Well, the trick here is if I teach you the basics and if I teach you how to think like a programmer and if I teach you how to use Google to your own advantage, you don't need me anymore. I mean, I run a game development academy and very soon I'm going to run a blog where you can find written tutorials. I'll probably put link down below if it's available. But anyways, I run those things and I teach people how to make games, but my goal is not to keep you in my teaching circle forever. My goal is to teach you and then you are free, like a bird, you know, I teach you how to fly and then I, you know, release you. Go free, be free, you know, because this is what people need to understand. Don't rely every single time you need a tutorial for something. Of course, you need to learn how to use Google to search online to, you know, that's a skill. That's a programming skill to be able to use Google to search online for solutions. But you need to start thinking on your own. If you don't know how to implement multiplayer in Unity, try to find some examples. Go on their documentation, read it, try to implement what's there, try to find an example online. It, 
it can be a tutorial, but like don't follow it step by step until you do it. Just see an example, see a chunk of code, put it in your code or put it in your editor in Unity and try to run it, see what happens, tweak this, tweak that. This is how you will advance or go or move from the beginner level. You don't need to wait for advanced tutorials for you to move from beginner to advanced game developer. And this is something that a lot of people have struggles with. Like, especially I see this on my channel, even on channels of other game developers, they just request a tutorial for something. Don't, when you learn the basics, when you understand how programming works, what is object-oriented program, you created a few basic games in Unity or Unreal Engine, doesn't matter. Just try to, you know, do things on your own. Search online, search example. GitHub is full of projects. Just find some project, inspect it, dissect it, open it, see the code that is written, see the method that is used to create something. And this is how you will advance and move past the tutorial hell point, which a lot of, you know, now online instructors, former online instructors, but now, how can I say, coaches are, you know, pitching because, you know, you're in tutorial hell, come and I will coach you, so it will not be in tutorial hell. Anyways. You can skip all of that on your own. So don't get stuck in that endless circle of learning and learning and learning and learning. So keep that in mind. And number three, number three on my list is, and this is going to be unpopular, but thinking that a good game will sell itself. <laughs> that is the, <laughs> that is some of the funniest things Thing, the, probably the funniest thing I've heard when it comes to game development, you know, I see this a lot on Facebook, on Reddit, and on other forums where people chat about game development and somebody presents their game and, you know, he tries to, you know, ask, he asks for advice, how can I market it and so on and so forth. People come like a good game will sell itself. Yes, a good game will sell itself when, you know, it gets in front of the right eyeballs. So when people see it, when people discover it and, and all of that stuff. If people don't know you, if people don't know your game, if people don't discover your game, then your good game will not sell itself. This is, you know, people answer or this is an answer from people when somebody asks about marketing, like in, essentially you don't need to learn any marketing skills and stuff like that. I hate to break it down to you, but if you are thinking to be a game developer, especially an indie game developer, you want to, you know, create a game, publish it online, you need to also learn some marketing skills. You need to know how to pitch your game. You need to know how to put your game outside. Same as how, you know, you would put any product out there. You know, like you need to build an audience. You need to have your presence on social media. This is why I talk a lot about how game developers, especially indies, should have their own YouTube channel, their own website and stuff like that, because this is how your good game will actually sell. And of course, when it gets momentum, when it gets a few sales, especially if it's on Steam, even if it's on Google Play, Apple App Store, depending on if it's mobile, if it's desktop, doesn't matter. But when it gets some traction, when it gets some attention, 1,000 people buy it, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 people buy it, then Steam will push it more, and then it will get in front of more people people and this is where then the good game will sell itself comes into play but just you know creating a game publishing it online hoping you know okay a good game will sell itself because people on the internet told me that no that's not going to happen so keep these three things in mind which cover you know, like your education which cover also you know how you would get technical skills which essentially will get you to a job or which will get you to the point where you can create your own games and pay attention like when you create a game, how you will pitch it and don't rely too much on advices that you see online. I mean, it's ironic because I'm online giving you advice, but I mean these stupid advices like, you know, you just do that small part and, you know, the big part will take care of itself. No, it will not. So yeah, th these were some things that I had on my mind that I had to say. It's, you know, probably going to spark a little bit controversy, but hey, th that was not my attention. My attention is to actually help you to get past these things. So yeah, anyways, check out the links I have in the description. Probably I will put the blog, which is going to be really cool. And uh, yeah, subscribe and all of that stuff because I'm on my way finally towards 100K, which was a long ride. So thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for being here. And I really appreciate you watching this video to the end. And I'll see you in the next one.